let's imagine that these photos represent you and you're kind of doing some kind of weight training. And let's also assume that you've been doing this weight training for, I don't know, something like 12 weeks. What would we expect to be the differences in your physiology? And by differences, we're really talking, it's actually up on the top of the screen there, we're actually talking about the physiological adaptations that your body would make because you've applied the FIT principle in a progressively overloading way and your body has had to respond to that um, greater stress in it through this kind of strength weight training. Could be plyometrics, we've got an example of that here, say, or could be interval training. What would we expect to be different. Well, I'm gonna sort of group those adaptations and these distinctions, and we'll come back to these images in a few moments time. But I'd first of all like to talk to you about muscle and connective tissue adaptations. So here, of course, when we talk about connective tissue, muscle's obvious, isn't it? But when we talk about connective tissue, we're talking about tendons, we're talking about ligaments, we could be talking about cartilage. But here's a couple of things that are absolutely critical for you to get into your answers. The first thing, if I go over here, is I'm gonna have an up arrow, a greater, percentage of FG fibers. So in other words, my muscle composition will increase, the percentage of the cross-sectional area of the muscle will increase its number or, or the, the area of those fast twitch, powerful, explosive, non-fatigue resistant type fibers. Now you might wanna to start to think about, well, what is the impact of this? Well, broadly speaking, we become more explosive, right? And if we become more explosive, we can apply that into our sporting context so that you are able to jump higher for a header, so that you're able to get a faster start in a 100 meter sprint, so that you are, for example, let's say, you're able to chase down an attacker when you're playing as a defender in hockey, whatever it happens to be, that's what that's gonna allow us to do. Secondly, we get an up arrow, that's an increase again, remember, we get an increase in overall cross-sectional area of the muscle. Now, if you recall that one of the factors affecting strength is indeed the cross-sectional area of the muscle, then of course, if that goes up, then overall strength is gonna go up. We're gonna get an increase in strength. And again, you can start going about actually applying that specifically into the performance activity that you're interested in or you're answering about. What does, what's the impact of that strength? Can I, for example, lift a heavier Olympic bar during my weightlifting, for example? These would be examples of where that would make a difference. Next one very closely related, we get an up arrow, we get an increase in force production. Well, of course, that is directly related to that concept of strength, to that concept of explosiveness. The question I would ask you is, what is the impact of that on your performance? Now, this one I find really fascinating. We get an up arrow, lots of increases here, right, in tendon strength. Now, you might be thinking, hang on a minute, that's not important, is it? They're not actually producing any force, and that's absolutely true but there's a couple of impacts of increased tendon strength. First of all, the tendon can actually cope with more force being applied through. Remember, the tendon connects the muscle to the bone, force is applied. But actually, we get increased efficiency of force transference. So if the muscle applies more force, the tendon now becomes better, more efficient at transferring that force onto the skeleton, and that of course is very, very beneficial in all kinds of ways. Now, let's go take a little bit further. Guess what? We get an up arrow, no surprise there, in the speed of contraction. So of course, if we get a speed of contraction increase, that means that we can be faster in our performances. Again, think about how you'd apply that specifically. But it can also be that we can actually produce the moment, the movement or repeat the movement again faster. Particularly plyometrics is good for this kind of thing. So if we can produce the movement faster, we can reproduce the movement faster again. That could be, for example, throwing not just one punch, but two punches in boxing or MMA. For example, this increased speed of contraction benefits our performance. We also get up arrow, an increase in ligament strength, of course, with this being a connective tissue. What this means then, of course, is that we've got more stable joints. We're less likely to experience dislocation, less likely to experience injury. But the other point, and I think this is a really neat one and leads off really well from this, the last one I'll make here, is we get an increase in strength, no surprise there, that's literally what we're talking about, increase in strength through full ROM. Okay, so we've talked previously, or depending on which videos you've done, we've talked previously 
about certain points in the range of movement being weaker for force production. And what weight training does, it maximizes that. So of course, that means that these two points are connected. We can go through a greater range of movement with force and the ligament strengthen to make sure that that is safe. It also means we've got um, more overall force production over a longer period of time. Now we don't study that on this course, but that's called impulse in biomechanics. So if you wanted to go and Google that, you'd be very welcome to do so. Now, I want to take this further because I don't just want to talk about muscular stuff. I want to talk about neural stuff as well. So this is neural adaptations to strength training, okay? So what would be that kind of nervous stimulation type cha uh, changes? Well, the first one is we get increased coordination of antagonistic pairs. Now, that will mean that your muscle contractions antagonistic pairs. So your muscle contractions will actually be more efficient, but this will also help with skill. You know, your skill performance may well improve. And another point, there's only really two points I wanna make here, is we get an increased up arrow speed of nerve transmission. So this, for example, will reduce, that's the better version, of course, your reaction time, your response times, increase in speed of nerve, <laughs> why can I not write correctly today, transmission. So of course, this is gonna help with things like reaction time and response times. That's going to make us better able to do that and just be more responsive and agile in our performances, right? And you can apply that to your football, to your tennis, to your hockey, to your swimming, to your dive starting swimming, for example, it's gonna be a benefit. Now to finish off with, we're gonna go past neural adaptations and I wanna to talk to you about metabolic adaptations. Now just to remind you, your GCSE, uh, biology here, remember those days? M um, metabolism is the sum of all chemical reactions in the body, okay? So just so we're clear on what, that's what we're talking about. Now we're gonna go quite specific here. Weight training achieves the following. We get an up arrow, an increase in glycogen stores. Now, could you immediately apply that to an impact in performance? If we've got more glycogen, we've got a more, in, uh, we've got a more efficient and long-term glycolytic system, can we maintain our pace longer in a 400 meter run? Talk about the impact of this. Second, and by the way, this is one of the things that makes the muscle fiber bigger. It's storing this, right? We're also getting increased PC levels. So we've got more phosphocreatine in the muscle, in the motor unit, and therefore that greater PC means that we can, for example, run the ATP PC system for maybe longer than 10 seconds. Does that have an impact for a 200 meter? Again, can I stress to you, impact, impact, impact. You must be able to give that. Furthermore, we also get an increase in ATP levels. You know, so the actual stores of ATP within the muscle increases. That means we've got more availability of immediate contractile energy in the cell. That's gonna have an impact on performance. We're also, and I've already taught, this is the, this really is coming from here. We've got an increased duration of the ATP PC system. I mentioned that one before. You know, for example, our, our 200 meter sprinter can sprint at, at top speed for a longer during the race. And then finally, I already mentioned this right at the start of this particular section, we've got up arrow and increased output because of our increased stored glycogen, we've got an increased output of our glycolytic, <laughs> glycolytic, of our glycolytical system. So can you s just notice for me here that this has the impact of this? This will have the impact, for example, let, let's just sort of stress what that would do to performance. This would mean someone with a, a sort of a, a, a better glycolytic system, they could run a higher intensity longer in 400 meters. What would be the impact of that? They would slow down less, right? So your job with this information is not just to note down what these adaptations are, but to take it into performance, show the impact of that and be specific with that impact. That is the skill of your assessment. I hope that helps. Cheers.